Welcome, everybody, to a all-new 2023 Improv is Dead. I'm one of your hosts, Tim Lyons. Here with me, as always, the handsome Dan White. Dan. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Tim, dude, hey, you know what? Uh, that was a great intro, and I'm going to give you some – I'm going to give the listeners some context here. As you can imagine, when we do these Zooms. We usually chat a little bit beforehand, and I mm. came into this Zoom with an incredibly negative energy, just like – dark clouds over my head just complaining bitching about this and that and tim you showed up right away with absolutely pristine positive you're smiling the whole time you're giving the yeah. listener something to tune in for i appreciate the effort you're putting into it buddy you want to you want to know how i did that dan how when you started talking with that negative energy, I glazed over. <laughs> just let me. You can just, you, let if him you get could it see out. the zoom right now, you could see just the the dead eyes that I had, and I was like, okay, he's talking. Let him get it all out, and now I'm in now I'm in host mode. Yeah, you know, uh, you're the man, dude. Dan, you're a good friend. Thank you, at Dan. 2023. Um, 2023. How's it going so far, uh, weather wise? If I can get my weather ch- chat out of the way. <laughs> raining in LA it's, great. And it's been that way for quite some time and I'm loving every second of it quite yeah. honestly it's great to live in a place I keep saying this to people but it's great to live in a place after my whole life you know in the Midwest to live in a place where when it rains you're actually like oh this is good it's good that we're getting yeah. rain because in the Midwest mm-hmm. you have all the fresh water you ever need you're like fucking yeah. more rain and there's a lot of biodiversity out here you want to feed those plants you wanna, we want to feed the earth you know what i just did i'm gonna do a quick wreck up here this is um this is gonna be high this is gonna be a little bit of an la local wreck but we we have a membership mm-hmm. to descanso gardens in glendale oh. which is like a giant botanical garden it's be- yeah. it's beautiful i recommend the the this guy like just check out your local botanical garden they're a great place to walk sure. around great place to to kind of get your oh, head yeah. right uh but we went to this thing they call it i think like the enchanted forest or something it's basically mm-hmm. like around christmas time they do the like these lights and we used to always do zoo lights in chicago which was awesome oh, yeah. we did zoo lights at the chicago zoo i love it yeah it was fun very like over the top very fun like campy like Christmassy, like nonstop in your face, like bum, ba, dun, 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 and like yeah. millions of lights. It's just like, you know, as cheesy yeah. as it can be. Super fun, too. Very cool. This one was like totally different, where it was like all this, like, very, um, like chimes and like home and like very, mm. like, zen or zen. Yeah. With like very soft lights, but they were all over like the trees and they had all, I mean, it was so cool. I mean, I was like, I t- totally recommend it. I actually think last night was the final night. So I recommend it for 2023. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but check out your local botanical garden. And if Sorry, they do buddy. any sort of nighttime, like light thing, check that out. Cause that yeah. was great. Very cool. What about you, buddy? Anything that. new with you? How's your 2023 been? 2023 is going great. I'm doing a dry January. Oh yeah. And you do that every year. I just, yeah, I do that every year. Uh, last year, I think I did a dry February. Oh, nice. Um, shorter month. But this year, back on the, yeah, shorter month. But this year, uh, I just hit the sweet spot yesterday. You know when you do dry January? I think the first week of a dry January is always the yeah. hardest. That's when you start shaking like, and you get headaches and you like throw I mean, I up. Was, in the I had the sweats, <laughs> yeah. I was like, more, give me game. Paige was putting a, had a thing on my head. It was like that scene in Last Samurai I was just going to say that scene in Last Samurai. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, that's basically what wow. I was up until that's last so night. Funny. No. <laughs> uh, but I, I, uh, but I did have a kind of a rough day yesterday, and I was like, man, a glass of wine would be nice. But instead, I just um, I just took a shower, and I got into bed around like 8.30 because I'd woken up very early mm-hmm. in the day. And uh, I was reading my book. I'm reading Dr. Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining. Yeah. Have you seen if, the movie? Uh, you didn't know that I had it? I did see the movie, but okay. I saw it when it came out. So I was like, oh, I'll read the book and, uh, you know, contrast and compare. No, that's great, man. I'm happy to hear it. I'm glad it's going. Uh, it's going well. Because a glass of yeah. wine at night is – I've become more of a wine guy. I, I tried to – I had a, it's sweet. a good – childhood friend in town this weekend we drank some beer mm-hmm. and um ooh, can't don't like it definitely prefer yeah wine. hurt you yeah i just yeah was it a hangover situation i mean it's always been this way it's not like an old thing like i've always been this way where i'm like even in my early 20s if i would drink like ipas the next day my stomach would be fucked oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just destroying the porcelain yeah, hate it yeah like, <laughs> damn that sucks yeah i'm not a i'm not a beer guy either it does it does turn my stomach a bit yeah and i wonder if like all beer guys they just don't talk about it but every <laughs> they, they have a beer they just wake up and just f- shit the bed every morning they just don't care they just don't talk about it. it's like an untalked about thing of, uh, with ipa guys they're like yeah i love my beer but go oh my god i go through sheets like you believe yeah. um dan we got a fresh review and this review here uh, is in response to your uh, question about our listenership in Colorado. Yes. So we asked folks uh, who are in the Colorado area. We, we had an uptick in listeners in that we area. We did. We did. And Dan asked, you know, if, if you're from that area, confirm it for us and leave us a review. And Baccarat 
uh, it's just Baccarat. I was going to mm-hmm. say numbers, but it's just Baccarat uh, did. So the review is called Demographic Confirmation. Thank you. Five stars. That you can't go higher than that. That's as high as you can go. Can't go higher. Can't go higher. They say, after blowing through everything Big Grande, wow, and Hey Riddle Riddle had to offer, decided to expand my listening horizons and found the delightful antics of Tim and Dan. Hey, <laughs> hey that's great. Having moved in with my father recently, okay, mm-hmm. near Arvada, Colorado, oh. it's nice to hear an amicable and entertaining father-son dynamic <laughs> that gives me hope for my ongoing relationship with my dad. Wow. Okay, so real quick, Tim, well, can I? is that done? Can I interrupt? That's it, yeah. Okay, ahead. well, real quick, I want to, I think there's one glaring factual issue in that review is that Tim and I are not father-son, which I don't think was directly mm-hmm. stated but heavily implied. So I want to be clear. Tim and I are just friends. We're not father and son. Um, mm-hmm. But on the positive side, from Arvada, that is exactly where we're seeing the uptick in. It wasn't even just the Denver yeah. region. I did say, like, generally, if you're from the Denver region, let us know. But it is Arvada specifically. So um, if – was it Baccarat? Is that was the name? Baccarat, yeah. If they're listening, uh, you know, upwards of 300 to 400 times a month, then uh, that mm-hmm. could be – that could we could solve the mystery right now. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing that sleep podcast yeah. where we just play it on Spotify I and guess. fall asleep and it plays the, keeps playing our catalog. I guess, yeah. Well, thank you, Becker. Well, Thanks great. for confirming yeah. it. I still believe that this is some sort of glitch in our um, tracking system. I don't know why there mm. are all, so many downloads are coming through our Vata, but you know what? What other podcast is going to give you so much insight into the back end <laughs> Yeah, software that we're t- they- we'll we'll literally tell you exactly how many people are listening when you're turning it off. Just let just ask us and we'll give you all the the nasty little exactly. details, even the sad ones. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this week's episode, we were supposed to have a guest. They ha- ended up having to uh, reschedule. NBD Dan and Tim can do it ourselves. Uh, and we had a suggestion from uh, one of our improv perverts in the Discord, okay. Matt S. What's up, Matt? Uh, wanted to know. Uh, what it would look like if Tim and Dan used popular AI chat GPT to generate prompts on the fly. Now, Dan and I off uh, microphone and off podcast have just had discussions about AI uh, and what it means for the future of entertainment and artists in general. Yeah. And Dan uh, Dan has a pretty, um, well, you have an opinion about it. I'll, I'll let you speak to it. If uh, you'd like to. I mean, I have an opinion about it in that I think it sucks. And I think mm-hmm. it's only going to probably end badly for people in yes. the uh, creative community. However, I don't necessarily think there's much that can be done to stop it. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times with this software and stuff, like, um, you know, the ramifications when they start impacting my world are pretty far down from probably the uh, the the – the high end implementation of what yeah. these things are being used for. That is yes. to say, like, I think the military, the US military probably has a lot of interest in AI mm-hmm. technology. Um, and so I think that the amount of money and funding going towards that, and a lot of, you know, powerful organizations do. And so I think that sort of stuff is like, the impetus for the drive and just general like human uh you know nature to to push forward um so i think by the time it really does start affecting the entertainment world it's you know that's that's yeah. pretty far down the pretty far rung down the ladder in terms of like uh, uh why this stuff is being pushed forward um but that being said i just i don't foresee a scenario where this helps uh, creatives in any way. I think it's only yeah. going to make it harder to get jobs. It's going to reduce the amount of jobs. Um, and it's going to, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, the, the ramifications of that are, you know, less people in the workforce means less collective bargaining. A lot of entertainment relies on unions. Um, so I think, yeah, I think this stuff is going to basically do what a lot of technology has done, which is, you know, very, uh, be very efficient at, uh, pushing more money towards a select few at the top uh you know with with mild convenience for everybody else it results in a lot uh fewer uh jobs and what we're going to do today is feed the beast (laughs) and make it even smarter (laughs) yes no uh for the most part and i I mean i not even for the most part i agree with dan uh wholeheartedly across the board on that stuff i've already seen um just in in playing some video games recently uh, there's a new game out there uh, called High on Life, and it's a lot of uh, the writers. I think it's the writers from Rick and Morty. Yeah, that's what um, you're saying. But somebody, I, I was Twitch streaming it, and somebody had mentioned that all the posters, you start off in a bedroom, 
and there's all these funny posters on the wall and i guess they were all generated using ai mm. uh, which is already somebody's job so some 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 yeah. designer who was supposed to design that just already lost a job uh, to, to AI. Yeah. Well, I um, think there's also and- some elements of that that I also did not touch on, which is like that, yeah, the fact that this stuff is, the way this stuff learns is by using other people's content, right? So like you're yeah. an artist, you create a piece of art that you don't license to these companies and they just feed it to their software and then it learns from that. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I guess there's probably moral arguments to be made about like education. I don't know. But like from my, you know, from my standpoint, you're, they're they're using your work to teach this, um, you know, software to eventually replace your your job. Yeah. Uh, which again, look, this is not the first time this has happened. It certainly won't be the last time it happens. Um, but I do think sometimes, like uh, the the general, you know, usage on the internet is is kind of fun. It's like it's fun and it's mm. uh, you know it's it's new. Um, and I think like uh, that there's there's a lot more serious ramifications that are going to come from it. That being said, it is fun. Yeah. It is cool. It is funny. And I did have a great conversation with former guest Jonah Cooper. She's really into it. And yeah, that's what I want to know. I was like, we, we should have Jonah on because I feel we like should. she she, is she had already. Yeah, yeah, we had we had some pretty like you know a pretty good com- com- DM conversation, and she has a lot of you know good opinions about it, and I think fair opinions. But uh, we mm-hmm. definitely disagree on a few key points. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, I think over the our overarching uh uh opinions probably more align with the fact that at some point we're probably gonna start needing like universal basic income for people because if mm-hmm. you auto away if you automate away all these jobs like at some point but um yeah but yeah, I, yeah i don't think that's necessarily in the next f- yeah. five to but, ten and years it's wild that how many different ones there are yeah. already so like chat gpt is the one that i feel like has gotten the most press based on like just from a writing standpoint yeah um, and what it can create based on like a very simple prompt, mm-hmm. but um, just my time spent going through TikToks on this stuff, like you can create a whole logo uh, yeah. for a company and a whole logo set just based on using a couple of different AIs uh, all together. And so it'll be it'll be like a tutorial on how to like use this AI to then put it into this AI to put it into this AI and you get this. Yeah. And I'm like, why are there? There's just so many that you can use. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting. I mean, I'm wondering, you know, a year from now or two years from now, how I'll how I'll feel about it and uh, how it will have affected me. But I'm, as a graphic I'm, designer, I'm, tr- yeah. Well, I'm just trying to stay open minded to it. It just seems like the people who are are on top of it and are learning how to work with it rather than against it are the ones that are going to be successful with this thing so down the line. This is actually. And I'm not even talking about. I'm not talking about like the programmers, yeah. the people creating it. I'm just talking about people who. Use you absolutely it, have to. I mean, and that's what actually what, what Jonah said. She mentioned that it's like it's more uh, akin to Photoshop at this point, where mm-hmm. it's like that's a form of AI, which is fair. I think yeah. there's um, there's this theory in in AI that I think this is also like such a like not funny episode so far. So we're gonna get I'm into we're gonna get into some funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like all I'm enjoying all myself. two guys who have no expertise in AI <laughs> just pontificating <laughs> at about have, the at least we're, at least of AI. we are self aware enough to know that we don't know that much about it. And here's two guys' opinions on a thing that we don't know anything about. Yeah. It'd be like us talking about film. Well, and I'm not going to film I'm school. no expert in AI, but I do think I have a pretty good insight into entertainment and how certain things work there and i think like mm-hmm. that's one thing where uh yeah i think that, that that's my you know my personal self-preservation concern is is that impact but the point i was gonna say is there is this thing in in ai technology which is pretty pretty uh well studied and, and understood and actually it just happened in um radiology it's like it's happening a ton right now in radiology which is like there's always this, uh, they introduce this technology and it, and it started with chess and they're like, this is mm. like so smart, but it needs humans to learn. And then it says like, mm. it needs humans. And then the next phase is like, it will never actually be smarter than humans because humans have like a degree of uh, reason and, and like understanding uh, nuance that this technology will not. And that the most effective brain trust will be part human and part AI. And then the technology progresses and it becomes there's no need for humans. Like, yeah, it's like kind of how it always goes where they're always. And that's what happened in radiology, where they're like, you know, they study these like 
uh, whatever. I don't know, I'm probably going to use the wrong term, but like CAT scans or whatever. And they're like, you know, mm-hmm. humans would look at it and look for cancerous, you know, issues, you know, uh, things like that. And this technology was designed and it could find them real quick. But then you needed the humans who'd been doing it for 20 years to know, like, what was a false positive and blah, 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 blah. And now it's at the point where they're like, if you're going to school for radiology, you will not have a job. Like, it's just like it's wow. the, the, the 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 AI has progressed too much. So yeah, maybe I'm like a conspiracy theorist. Maybe someone, an AI expert at home is listening and is like, that's not true. But from what I've gathered, that's what I understand. Mm-hmm. And I think anytime that there's an opportunity to reduce headcount and yeah. payroll, the people at the top are going to like that because that's more it, money yeah. in their pocket. So that's my that's my take on it. Yeah. Well, what happens when you turn the electricity off, Dan? Then they're going to need humans again. That's true. Uh, to just kind of wing it. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into this. This we we used. Uh, I'm glad we're spending our time G- learning how to farm rather than <laughs> recording an improv podcast. Yeah. Uh, well, we we're about to get into yeah. some improv here. Well, I wanted to give him an example. So this is my this was my first time using Chat GTP. So thank you, Matt S, for uh, asking us to do this because I did find it pretty interesting. And just figuring out what prompts to feed this thing to actually get some uh, ideas generated from it. Um, and the first thing I asked it was generate a couple of improv suggestions for a two-person improvised comedy scene. Love that. Um, and the, it, you know, just very direct. Just let's yeah. get some ideas. So we got, and we got some classic ones that you've probably seen before in improv scenes. So we've got a customer service representative and a disgruntled customer. Great. We've, both, we've done that yeah. before. Uh, and then it kind of gives you like an example of like the customer has a ridiculous problem that they need help with and the customer service rep has to solve it while maintaining their professionalism. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're already replaced. So like right there. Yeah. There's no, <laughs> yeah, we don't need, we went from not, step one, you one to, to five. Do, but now you have to do the scene. Now you need somebody to do the scene, make it layered and interesting. Yeah. Because I, and to that point, Dan, I did ask the AI to generate a one person, or sorry, a one minute, two person improvised scene between two men. Okay. Us being the two men. Uh, here's how it went. I could do this very quick. Quick. Two men, Jack and Sam, are standing at a park. Jack, hey, what are you up to today? Sam, not much. Just taking a walk. It's such a nice day out. Jack, yeah, it really is. You know what would make it even better? Sam, what's that? Jack, ice cream. Sam laughs. I don't know. I'm trying to wait, watch my waistline. Jack, come on. One scoop won't hurt. I'll even pay for it. Sam, well, when you put it like that, sure, let's go get some ice cream. They exit the scene. So if I'm a coach, this scene's dog shit yeah. to me. I think and here's why. Well, I think I just want to say, whatever you're going to say, I want you to read that scene back, but imagine Mike Brunleap as Jack, and you will see oh, that that it. scene yeah, is going to crush. That is funny. <laughs> yeah. Come on. That one is true. scoop won't hurt. One scoop won't hurt. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's how you play it. Um and then they exit the scene. I guess that's lights out. Damn it. All right. Well, I guess the AI is pretty good. But you still need you still need Mike Brunleib in yeah. there. AI can't replace Mike Brunleib. Uh, yeah, no, um, that, that is a pretty dog shit scene, I will say. Yeah. Um, hey, what's up is like the worst initiation ever. Yeah. You, you want to sometimes try and start in the middle of the scene. But mm-hmm. you know what? I guarantee you I'm going to give you this prompt or we're going to start this scene with a hey, what's up. Just <laughs> subconsciously. That's true. So uh, this was the one I put in. Yeah, this is the one I put in. And it really gives you a bunch of different, you know, it gives you your classic radio show host and a guest. But it's also pulling from stuff on the internet or stuff that people have put in before because all these prompts kind of sound like something that an improv teacher in class would be like, hey, let's get two people up. Let's see this scene. Yeah. You know, you would just like throw them in a very simple situation, which is what we found on the podcast to be the best way to get into scene. Yeah. sometimes, getting those scene requests because in the podcast setting, you're uh, like you always say, Dan, you're already working with one hand behind your back. Yeah. You don't have that physical you element to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so this is the one I put in and we'll do this one cause I, okay. it's kind of uh, it's kind of funny. Um, so I put in two person improv I- or scene ideas that involve two people that could be formed on an improvised comedy podcast. Okay. So what I got very specific. Very good. It. Um, so this is the, this is the second one it gave us uh, a pair of coworkers who are stuck in an office together during a snowstorm. The scene could revolve, uh, involve the characters trying to pass the time and find ways to stay productive while the storm, while they wait for the storm to pass. They could also try and come up with creative ways to stay warm and comfortable. Oh my God, that's a good suggestion. <laughs> so that that is the that is the full suggestion. And the robot gave you that. And the robot, the AI gave me that. Oh. <laughs> God. All right. <laughs> The 
damage to the last bag of Funyuns. You can have it. No, no, no. I'm good. You can no, have it. I had the uh, animal crackers like an hour ago, so I'm good. Okay. All right. Plus, worst comes to worst, we can get into Bruce's office. He's got all those uh, granola bars and shit. Oh, yeah. Those weight bars. Health nut. Health, health nut. nut. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <clears throat> I changed my screensaver. Yeah? Based on the weather outside. Just put a little island background on this thing. <laughs> just to, so it feels like we're nice. not living through this. Yeah. Honestly, you know, not how I envisioned Christmas. No. Luke, but uh, hey. Not at all. To us. No, this is great because I've... Uh, I was not going to spend it with anybody, so having you really? here is like this is like really nice. Where's your family? You're not from. Uh, I was disinvited, is what the email said uh, from this year because disinvited, uh, of not uninvited. Dis disinvited. Yeah, so I was I had been invited. Okay. Uh, and they rescinded it, so I guess that still is uninvited. Yeah, right now I'm on your side because it sounds like whoever made the decision it was not yeah properly thought out. Ed email was not edited because I mean I have to think G was it through Gmail I have to think Gmail would have underlined that word in red I don't yeah it, I, it said well you know what I got a computer right in front of me let's just try it real quick I'm gonna pull it up here okay. so I got on <laughs> yeah. Gmail here uh huh this can you use it in a sentence can you read me the email so I can use it in context of how it was said yeah um, it says uh, this is from my sister Luke we have all decided that you are now disinvited from Christmas for spiking the eggnog last year. We don't think that that was very funny. And one of the kids drank it. Okay, wow. Okay, so I can cut you off right there. And disinvited is yeah. not showing up as red in my... So I guess it... I, 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 I suppose... Well, hold on, because now... <laughs> synonym... Uh, I'm going to just Google it. Okay. And... I mean, it still hurt to read it. I think it still had the wow. same. Wow. Okay. So disinvited is a word. It is correct. They used oh. it correctly. And uh, color my ass embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely still had the same uh, hit rate in terms of how it made me feel when I saw it. Jesus. Um, but yeah, I spiked the eggnog last year as a joke for a TikTok. I wanted to get my dad. And, and a, your um, nephew drank it? My nephew drank it, yeah, Ugh. and he ended up, yeah, he ended up a, a little tipsy, and uh, it was an accident, though. I didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't think that the kids were gonna be drinking the eggnog. It, it was an eggnog switch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So Nog they switch. disinvited me, um, and now I, uh, I was just gonna, you know, watch a movie. Watch. I was probably gonna do like the Harry Potters or something like uh, that. Oh, Potter marathon. Yeah. Yeah, my wife and I do a uh, a little Potter marathon. Uh, every uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm usually That's with great. the fam. Yeah, it's great. Nice. God. Would you imagine living in a world like that? Just like the, the spells and the oh, yeah, monsters. The and, world? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be wild. Oh, God. <clears throat> Sometimes I just think about like, oh, gosh, I wish I could just cast a spell and have this done, have this email sent or... Mm -hmm. Have this person killed or whatever, you know? It's like I get caught up in traffic. Have it wait. Cut, cut off in traffic, and I'm just like, uh, you know, ever could ever. Oh, so you would use the the negative spell? You would use the one of the forbidden spells? Yeah, I would predominantly use the per forbidden spells. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, you know, if someone cuts you off in traffic or something, you go, ah, oh, you motherfucker, you cut me off, you mother stupid son of a bitch, learn to drive. I just said, ever could ever, they're dead. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Damn. God, when people cut me off in traffic. I mean, it sounds like it sounds like the, the equivalent of that would be a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we weren't in the wizarding world, it, it was just because it's a wand that makes it okay. I don't know, man. <laughs> no, I would. I mean, I would just take him by, you know, I'd pull him out of his car and rip him, take him by his shirt collar, just rip him out of his fucking car, put him, slam him on the cement, put my wand right in it, right between his fucking eyes. <laughs> I say, look, yeah. I look him right in the eyes. He'd know I have all the fucking power. He'd look in my eyes. He'd say, I should never have cut him off. He has every, he, my life yeah. is, literally all he has to do is pull that trigger on the wand. And I, my yeah. life will be. Yeah, you're holding your wand like it's a gun, though. <laughs> <laughs> the way you're holding your I wand is not my, like how I'd they hold a wand my, between two. I'm just saying, I'd stick my wand in his mouth. I'd say, you fucking yeah. cut me off. You regret that? 
and then I cock it. <laughs> I'd cock my wand slightly. Cock your wand. <laughs> I'd say I feel his teeth hitting the top of my wand. I'd say, "You motherfucker, you cut me off in traffic." Jesus. And then I'd say, "Do you, are you sorry? Are you fucking sorry?" And he'd say, "Please, don't, <laughs> don't shoot." He'd say, "Please, don't <laughs> shoot." <laughs> and I'd say, "Don't shoot." I thought I hope you learned your lesson today. Ever cadaver. Jesus. But yeah, man, could you imagine? And then you'd have like I elves mean, and stuff. It'd be so funny. Yeah. It would be so funny. Would, uh, man. Yeah, I guess I didn't oh, think about the, the using the, the Hagrid the forbidden the forbid forbidden stuff. Oh man. I'd be more I would think of the like having all the food on the table like right away. Oh, it would be kind all of a that cool food, thing. Like those floating apples yeah. and stuff. Mm hmm. Gosh, that'd be so um, oh, that'd be so fun. And you cast spells not to have to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. You can cast a spell on your stomach you, to... Oh, yeah. You know what I, I hate when someone, like, pisses in a bathroom and, like, doesn't flush? Because it's, like, communal bathroom, you know? And then, yeah. like, if you caught someone doing that, you just take them by their collar and just throw them on the fucking bathroom ground. Stick your wand what? right in their mouth. <laughs> no, uh... No, you have this. Because they this wrong, a it's a, they wrong society. You stick your fucking wand right in their mouth. You say, "You feeling lucky today, pal? I could blow your fucking brains out with my spell right now." Man, I don't. You. That doesn't seem right. I think because I think one of the things in the, I think is a problem about the Harry Potter world is they make it too hard to get wands. They have to do all that stuff at like Ollivanders and stuff. Yeah, you know, there's too much red tape. Because the only well, way to stop tape, a good a bad wizard is a good wizard with a wand. Is with a good wizard with a wand. Well, that I actually agree yeah. with. That 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 the one to one on that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it, it is good that it it does. They do have a lot of sanctions in place that you uh, you know a muggle can't just walk in and get a wand. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how I'd so probably that, do that's it. That's a good thing. I'd probably do it. I think you'd have to find someone you didn't know, like, you didn't have any association to. Also, the second you do one of those 23 and Me's, you know about this? The second you do one of those two 23 and Me's, they have your DNA on file. The government. Oh, wow. That's I... how they catch a lot of guys. Oh, wow, mm-hmm. really? If you or anyone in your family, so you gotta make sure you get no DNA. There's no DNA when you ever cadaver somebody in the wizarding world. That sucks, to be a criminal <laughs> and just, like, one day you're just like, well, I don't want to be a criminal today. I just want to see who my great 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 grandfather was. You give that up, and then you when you dedicate and you give to it a up, life and of then crime, and then they show up to your house. And you're just like, hey, your great great grandfather was like Sir Arthur the Third, also ever could ever bitch, and then they and then they zap you at the front door of your house. Mm. Well, they wouldn't. That's trash. They wouldn't ever could ever you right away. You're 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 due for a trial. You be you have the right to a trial in the wizarding world. I agree though. Oh, that's that's right, trash. Yeah. I think that they the way that these companies collect data. You know, you know what you can do. Mm-hmm. You gotta get a uh, VPN scrambler. Anytime oh. I go to any website, okay. they don't know where I'm at because I because oh, I great. scramble my VPN. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you also you have your passwords all on your computer <laughs> screen. <laughs> They're not even on. Yeah, like, a I know. I forget them, so I have them on. Well, I have a Word doc. Well, I have to. I have a bunch of. I'm on a Word doc. I have them on a sticky note. Um, I have a note on yeah. my phone. I email them this to myself. This one says VPN password. Yeah, that's a password to my secret VPN. Oh, that okay. one's out of Detroit. Oh, okay. Which honestly is, shit, we're like five miles from Detroit. That's honestly, I should probably change that. But yeah, you got to watch that shit because the government is always watching you. Always. Mm-hmm. They can you see this little camera. That's why I have tape over it because they're, they'll come in and watch you. Yeah. Yeah, even at work. I I, I, I'm not doing anything interesting that they want to see on camera. <laughs> Trust me, man. It doesn't matter. All right. But yeah, dude, I couldn't imagine living in the Harry Potter world. That'd be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Oh man. Do you have a do you have a favorite character? Slytherin. Oh, as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole. Yeah. Well I think it, it is based off a guy, Slytherin. His last name is Slytherin, I think. Okay, nerd. No, I'm just saying, I think <laughs> It was ever cadaver you for being no, a nerd. Why, come on, why, why me? <laughs> uh, man, this has been great, dude. This has been great. Yeah, this has been really nice. Yeah, I would have just been watching the movies and I don't know. It's weird. It's like office feels like starting to feel like home almost. You know? 
a little bit. That, that's dangerous talk. I know, I know. You know, because then you'll start saying that we're a family, and then that's really <laughs> dangerous. Yeah, it just fucking sucks, man. I, uh, uh, I hate to say this. Uh, I'm just gonna rip it off. I was supposed to fire you right before this this whole thing, this whole snore storm. Wait. Made. What? I was supposed Why? to what? let you go. I mean, I know I was on. I know I was on a watch, but that was I got put on a watch like two days ago. Yeah. Well, they got. Uh, I hate it. Basically, they were monitoring your VPN. They caught you going to some websites you weren't supposed to. Anything specific? I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me click the email here. Uh, let's see here. Onlyfans.com backslash okay. user colon family guy mods. <laughs> yeah. Underscore premium account. And it looks like there was like, looks like you downloaded like 250 files on your work computer. Let's see. Yeah. I got because, uh, <clears throat> low, uh, we have a faster connection lowest, here than I have. Lowest plus Brian. <laughs> okay. Underscore yeah. her doggy style. Brian, un, Brian and Lois underscore doggy style. Looks like maybe they just reverse. Sorry, me play. Looks like most of these are Brian. Well, Brian's clearly the alpha yeah. in the house. Brian, Brian, Peter at Lois. Okay, what? Well, these. Brian I, Marge. Yeah, there was a. I was actually waiting for that one. The crossover is good. That's a good. I like it when they cross over the cartoons. That's but that's I I was only downloading put them on a on a drive and then I was going to delete them all off. Like I because the, we have fiber here and I'm still on like I only have like a 200 megabit connection at home. Okay. So I was just downloading it. I wasn't I wasn't going to watch. I did not watch any of them at work. I'm, I peaked one, but it was only just because to make sure I was getting the file right. Ugh. And then I and then I brought them home. Yeah. Well, there's just a lot of Brian uh you know anime here. Okay, well, I'm sorry that I have a favorite porn star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that counts as a... Yeah, but look, man. He's a cartoon. You put him in a different position. He's now he's my favorite I'm porn star. You gotta scramble your VPNs when you do this stuff, okay? Okay. You gotta scramble. You're right. <sighs> All right, I'm... Yeah, I'm, yeah. Do I... Is it like a two weeks thing, or am I... I fought hard for you for two weeks, so uh, we're going to put you on a... A double watch probation for two weeks. Okay, so. Okay, great. In those t- starting when? <laughs> Am I able to? <laughs> what are you, you're, why are you you're clicking around your computer here? Are you da- yeah, I just need to. I just need to. Just tell me when is, is it starting now or is it starting? It's supposed to start before the snowstorm three days ago. So. Okay. Shit. Okay. Well, I just have a bunch of downloads going in Kazaa right now, and <laughs> if I if, oh. I if I if I just. Pause a couple of these and okay, I'm gonna pause a couple of these. Okay, this is really the only one I want. If I pause these, this jumps it up to it'll only take two days to download. Uh, no one's even gonna be in the office until the new year. You're, Just you're on Kazaa? You're doing this on Kazaa? Yeah. Oh god, that's why we're getting all these fucking Trojan viruses. Yeah, sorry about that. <sighs> it's the price you pay for the good stuff. <laughs> Jesus. All right, well. If, I mean, imagine if this was the Harry Potter world. They wouldn't even have to do this, Oh, my God. Right? Could you imagine? Yeah. I could just, you know, what, what the spell? Uh, 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 Havarda, uh, Brian's penis, and I would just be there. Just get You just get it. Yeah. Ugh, that would be the dream. Brianus and Lois. <laughs> and then <laughs> they would just be together. Be like, in front just... of me. I wouldn't even have to, like, download it. Like, they would be here. Oh, my God. I could make them my Patronuses. That'd be so. I think Brian would be my Patronus. <laughs> from Family Guy? From the fa- from Family Guy. Brian would be my Patronus to, like, get the Death Eaters away and stuff mm. like that. Brian would come Super out. Super good. Like, yeah, that's a good one. I don't think so. I think my Patronus would be, uh, like, a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> it could go really shoot someone from, like, two miles away. They wouldn't even know, and you could just pink mist them from two miles away yeah i don't like that phrase just like mist (laughs) get them lined up in your scope i mean it'd be a terrorist it wouldn't be like you know it'd be a terrorist or someone who did 
wished harm on America or a murderer, you know, or someone who like sends me like a really cuts me off in traffic. <laughs> Yeah, it could be that. like they cut me off, and I don't even go after them right there. I kind of like let them drive home, but I follow them, and then I get to the high ground, and I look at them through my scope, and they're walking in, bringing in groceries, and I line them up. They don't even have any fucking idea, and I line them up with my Patronus, <laughs> and then I say, "Ever cadaver." Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you actually have to say the spell. The, the Patronus it, is the then spell. It shoots a little at, then, yeah, it shoots the average dabber or just pink miss them right in their front oh, yard. God. Yeah. God, couldn't it be so funny? And then you also have like the funny juice that they drink. Oh, the, yeah, the, the changes your body type. Oh, my God, that'd be so fun. I God, I'd love to be in the wizarding world. Yeah. That would butter be cool. beer? Oh, I'd love to try butter yeah. beer. It's actually just they have butter. You can get butter beer here. It's really? It's just like butterscotch. Yeah, it's like butterscotch and ginger yeah. beer. Yeah, oh, you know it's not as good though as it would be in the yeah, wizarding. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could live in the wizarding world, man. Oh, God. Think about like if someone drinks too much butter beer and dries, it comes to, like a drunk driver. You just like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's uh, that's improv that's from uh, AI <laughs> prompts. That's what you get. You I get guess. a lot of uh, uh, yeah, like planned uh, assassination. Pl- yeah, planned assassination Pre- using Harry Potter spells. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, and those both so, those men made it home safely. The snow broke. Everyone was safe, yep, and no one act, no one ever acted on their worst impulses. Be it and he Brian, was invited back to he was re invited back to his. Uh, uh, to his family's party, so that's that's good to that's good to know. That's the epilogue of that. Scene. Great, yeah. Uh, Dan, anything uh, you want to promote that's going uh, on this this week? I think I plugged botanical gardens. I'm also gonna plug this new show on Peacock. People are talking about it's so good. It's called Paul mm. T. Goldman. Check it out. It's so good. It's very funny. I'm uh, I haven't watched last night's. Episode, I don't even but... know what to make of it yet. I'm like, I think yeah. I love this. I think I love it. We'll mm. see where we end up. Yeah, it's it's very very good. Yeah. Uh, I'll plug our own show uh, that's actually Wet Bus's show happening this Wednesday. Good if you're in job. the LA yeah. area uh, at 7 p.m. at the Yard Theater, uh, it's going to be us and Man Dog Pod and Wet Bus and Sitcom D and D. That's right. Uh, all doing live improv. I don't think we're recording any of it, but uh, if you're in the LA area and want to come out and see some live improv, come on by the Yard Theater. Very fun theater, and they do this. Uh, Re- rotating show every Wednesday night. It's called Shylax Comedy. You can follow nice. them at Shylax Comedy, I think, on Instagram. So come check Super us fun. out. We'll be hanging out yeah. for a little bit. Uh, Dan, this was a blast. Matt S., thank you so yeah, much thanks, for the Matt. suggestion. I hope uh, we all. I learned a little bit of something about AI today, and uh, maybe we'll come back to this a uh, little bit later on with uh, some more guests and see what we can make of it. Yeah, that was fun. I'll do it again. Yeah.